How you guys doing? Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Lipstick Jihad as my expert assignment done by Adiz uh, Moveni and I am going to do it as I'm going to post the video and then post the PowerPoint so that you guys can go through it and I'll just tell you when to slide. So next slide. So who was she as a writer? She was born in Palo Alto, California, so obviously she was American. And then parents had been pushed to the United States by the Iranian uh, Revolution. So many of them became refugees and came to America based on their views. And then the policing that was like so violent. And she ended up studying politics or yeah, politics at the University of California, Santa Cruz. So she had a formal education and then she has worked across the Middle East reporting for the Times Magazine and also Los Angeles Times. So she was a very prolific writer. And then Lipstick Jihad is a memoir that Adiza used to show how Iranians use nonviolent demonstrations to resist the government at hands. And she had some form of like identity crisis where she believed that being an Amer or Iranian in America was what's called like not beneficial to her, but it, she also had her feelings of how she was an American in Iran. And now next slide. I'm gonna do the summary beforehand to just encapsulate all of it. So as a young Iranian American that is looking for identity in a cultural split life, she doesn't feel comfortable in her American ways. She doesn't want to feel like an outcast for believing that in her traditional ways are being judged. Clinging on to the vision that she would feel more in tune with her culture, she moved to Tehran, Iran. As she moves to Tehran, she is met with a shift in political power, comes through a regime shift, and then that comes with the softening and rebellious nature of personal identity. As the only journalist that is allowed at this, this significant time in Iran, she has her own unique and personal point of views of how she feels and sees through her experiences firsthand. Um, she talks about the horrible actions of the vigilantes acting as police, the cultural outcries that the youth had in that time in the way that they lashed out towards authority and the symbolic clothes that are worn in the way this affected the culture. Next slide. So the main points of this is that she didn't feel like she fit into either one of her cultures. As an Iranian in America, she believed that her um, morals were being, what's it called, um, taken back. And she believes that it was a fight between two evils. And she felt like an outcast in America for being Iranian and felt like it was the more strict structure of Iran as a country would fit her better. So she went to Iran so that she felt that the culture had, when she went to Iran, she felt that the culture had pushed too far to the other side and became too rebellious. So she had to deal with this conflict as she did in America as also in Iran. And so the main, the next slide, the main points to set up the writing. So in the first, like, three or four pages, she talks about how it was a fight between evil and slightly less evil because somebody talked to her about how journalists set up their writing talking about good and evil, but that's what her response was. And, and she talks about how, sorry, um, how the people of Tehran became more free during the I'm so sorry that I can't pronounce this right. Kamani's presidency. This has been a major shift due to uh, policing policies because beforehand the women would have to wear uh, veils and burqas in public, and they still did. But a lot of like the clothing and things like that had become less strict at, at the time. And she was also the only journalist allowed, like I said before. And then. Her decision to go to Iran was deeply like gone against in her family, which also create created a cultural and identity crisis where she had to go away from her family. Her family thought her going to Iran would be a fatal one where it comes from 
due to her morals and personality that she had in the westernized culture and her father actually said that he would cut her off completely because she had um what's called disrespected him um but with this shift in power in Tehran, women will fight to have their own individual personalities this coming out in different forms that i'm going to be talking about um next i'm going to be talking about the police so with the shift in power there had been seen as this vigilante movement starting where these people wouldn't be nationally secure but they would go out and enforce this in their own ways so as the regular policing lessened by the shift in power the use of vigilantes rose the old traditions were still expected to be met and with many of the youth going out and partying and wearing makeup and trying to be in relationships they had not seen this as something beneficial and um these bushy um she talks about a personal antidote where she was out in public with her friend and her boyfriend the her friend's boyfriend and this bougie came up to them and asked if they knew each other and they had to lie to their face and they asked if she knew him and she had to deny that she didn't know him even though it was her boyfriend and he asked if he would care if he beat him and she said i don't know him you can do whatever you want and so the baji punched him in the face and asked her if she cared so there was a what's called a sense of like violent tyranny in the time and she said her friend said you can beat him till he's bloody she said holy but i've already told you and i'm telling you now i have not no idea who he is her voice didn't even quiver so they had this sense that they had to do this to keep each other safe and so the baji would violently act in any way they wanted because they weren't part of the national state and this would lead to violent beatings like told in the story of men and women for not keeping traditional standards and next slide sorry i'm on the youth rebelling um for many of the youth they wanted their own individual personality so the youth of tehran lashed back against the police having underground parties, wearing excessive amounts of makeup, trying to be as sexually active as they could, and wearing risque clothing. And there's a quote that says, the majority aim of the revolution had been to impo or impose the Islamic faith on Ra Iranian uh, society, but the cal catalog of restrictions on dress, behavior, and speech were like gone against. So the youth were the main, what's called? like spearhead kind of for having this change happen so they would wear like how it said like lipstick and face makeup to go against this and for Ajit Ajide felt that because she was an American person she had been seen as like this sex crazed human and she had been a target of the time so the young people had like go she believed had gone too far with what they were looking at and like she felt discriminated against because she still did want those traditional values so she would have to talk later to other people to see how she could get away from this stigma and yeah basically she felt segregated against again in iran so this sets up the last slide which is a can't say her name well her thoughts on this um so here's a quote that like pretty much symbolizes the whole article it's an impossible pair of choices one would corrode your, your spirit and another would bring daily agitation to your life this i realized was the central dilemma of life under the islamic reign in its culture of lies whether to observe the taboos and restrictions or resist them by living as they didn't exist what if your conscious and your spirit decided the latter, but you didn't have the energy to live each day as a struggle, what do you do then? So this basically summarized her life in Iran. So she had been this American 
Iranian that didn't feel comfortable in America because she wanted this strict and more traditional value of wearing the veil and like being part of the culture. But at the same time, she already had this Western idea of being independent and having her own identity, honestly. And she came to Iran at a rebellious time where the youth wanted change and they did this by lashing out in symbolic ways like talking about sex all the time and wearing colorful veils and wearing makeup and being okay with resisting the police because that was the only way that they could in a non-violent way. So this came as a symbolic gesture of revolution for them and it was good that it was part of this change in power but she believed that it had gone too far that she was in this kind of middle ground that she couldn't get away from so my questions are what do you think the cultural impact uh, or what cultural impact do you believe that these symbolic clothings made for Iran in the shift in power and the policing and stuff like that and then how would you feel being put in the place of the writer in this like kind of cultural defined like identity that she had that she couldn't really escape in both ways and then having like a larger look I want to talk about do you believe that many segregated groups in America look for their identity through their original cultures and in what ways and how does this apply to the text and how she wrote. So thank you.